Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at working with parameters and return values with different ways of defining functions. My name's John from the website caveofprogramming.com and this, con this is continuing my series on Node.js and JavaScript for complete beginners. So in the last video we took a look at function definitions and expressions, different ways of creating functions in JavaScript. If you've watched that video, hopefully you've practiced this a bit so that it's starting to seem familiar to you. In this video, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to bring in parameters and return values. So let's maybe write functions that calculate factorials. So the factorial of a number is defined like this. Let's say we have, for example, three factorial. So we, we, write, we write it like this. So that's three factorial. What does it mean? Well, it's equal to 3 times 2 times 1. So you can guess that, for example, 5 factorial equals 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Not that it makes any difference it's multiplying by 1. This is a simple idea from mathematics. Can we write a function that calculates this? And you might want to pause the video and have a go at it and see if you can do it, because it's a good little exercise. Okay, so let's start by creating a function using a function definition. And the way we do that is we have function, we have a name for it, let's call it factorial1, because I'm going to have more of these. And we have round brackets and curly brackets. We want to pass a single argument to this function. And that's going to be the number that we calculate the factorial for, like 3 or 5 or whatever. So let's give that a name. We could call it, for example, value. And then we can write the function. So we're going to have to um, iterate over all the different values, um, uh, sort of counting up to this actual value. Let's, let's try it. It's actually easier to do this by writing a function that calls itself, but we won't look at that just yet. That's called recursion. Let's do it using a loop. So I'm going to have four, let, let's say, let's call this maybe n, because it's, it's like a number. n equals one, although we don't really have to bother with one, strictly speaking. We keep going while n is less than or equal to value. And then we increment n. So we start off setting the value of n to 1. We're going to keep looping until it's um, equal to the value that we pass in. And we'll, we'll also loop for that. But when it's more than the value, we'll stop. So when this condition's false and n is not less than or equal to the value, then we don't loop anymore and then we increment n every time we go around the loop. So for a start, let's just do console.log n and see what values we get for n when we call this function. And it's a really good thing to do, to, to build up your programs bit by bit and check them along the way. Use console.log to check that they're actually working as you expect at each particular step. Don't write a load of code and then just run it, because that can get confusing. Write little bits and check that they're working. So let's call factorial. So we, we write the name of it, factorial1, and we pass in some value like 3. So we expect this to print out 1, 2, 3. Let's see if it works. So if I run this, what do I actually call it? Let's write node function expression parameters.js, and we get 1, 2, 3. So it seems like it's working OK. Let's try it for 5. We should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And, yeah, I just altered the wrong thing there. So I want to pass in 5 when I call the function. Unfortunately, I have trouble seeing over my microphone. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's working. What we have to do is multiply all those values by each other. You know, it, it doesn't matter what order we do them in, so 3 times 2 times 1 is of course the same as 1 times 2 times 3. And we could start this at 2, it makes no difference, but just to make it look a bit simpler, I'll start it at 1. Alright, so let's have a variable. Let's write let 
and I'll call this factorial equal one, maybe. In fact, let's change this to two because the thought of it being one pointlessly sort of annoys me. And then what we have to do here is say, so we want to say factorial equals factorial times n. And then when we finish, we can display it console.log factorial. Let's see if it's what we expect. So for 5, we get 120, which I think is correct. Let's try 4. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So 4 times 3, what's that? It should be 24, I think. Um, let's run it. 24. Let's try it for 3. 3 times 2 is 6. So it's, it's working. We've got the value that we want. But we want to return it rather than display it. So if we return it, let's say return factorial. And when we actually when we actually call the function, we can now get a return value. So let's say let result one, I'll call it, equal factorial one of three. So notice the function is called factorial one. And I've got a variable here called factorial. So those are two different names. And let's do console.log result result one. And I'll try it for four. So if we run it, we get 24. Now there is a, a bit of a twist here with factorial, which is that by definition, factorial of zero is supposed to be one. And this isn't going to work with factorial zero, or is it? Let's try it. So if I say factorial zero, we get one. So I've started factorial at the value one, and then the loop doesn't execute at all. So it does actually work. Otherwise, I would have put an if in here to check if value is zero at the start and then just returned one. But this works anyway. All right. Um, so let's look at doing this using function expressions. And if you've watched the last video and you think you can probably actually work out how to do it, then do go ahead and have a go. Pause the video and try it. So let's write let factorial 2, and this time I'll use a function expression. So we write equals function, we have round brackets and curly brackets. In the round brackets we put our comma separated list of parameters. In this case we just have one parameter. And then we have to do these calculations. So I, normally you try not to duplicate code in a program, but here we're just doing the same thing three different ways just for demonstration purposes. So I just copy this code, it's going to be the same. And don't forget the indentation. And you should be able to run, I think it's option shift um, F or alt shift F to run the auto formatter. On my Mac it's op option shift F, I'm guessing Windows alt shift F. Probably there's also a menu option here somewhere. But you want to make sure, you know, look it up if you can't figure it out. But you want to make sure that you can run auto format in your um, in in uh, Visual Studio Code. Make sure it works and use it a lot. I recommend it. But try to write well formatted code to start with. This is incredibly important. Okay, so now we've we've defined a function using a function expression, and we can write let result to equal factorial to and let's pass in uh, 5 should get 120 and then we can write console.log 5 and something went wrong what did I do wrong? <laughs> console.log 5 I meant result 2 okay there we go we got 120 we could also do this like this. So I could write console console.log and factorial let's call one of these functions like factorial two, doesn't matter which one, and pass in four or something. So if I write this, so this is actually calling the function 
and then passing the result immediately to console.log just without the intermediate variable that we have here. So this also works. If I run this, we're getting 24 down there. And finally, using the other form of what is essentially a function expression again, let's write let factorial 3. So I have to give it a different name, so I'm just going 1, 2, 3 at the end of the function name here. Um, equals, and this time we have round brackets, an arrow, and curly brackets. So basically, we've got an arrow instead of the keyword function is the difference. And the order is slightly different, but it's, it's pretty much the same as this one. And it is another kind of function expression. So if I just copy the content of this and paste it in, and let's call it, and this time I won't bother with the intermediate variable to get the value. I'll just write console.log factorial 3, and let's pass in uh, 6, which should be 6 times 120. What is that? 720? Let's try it. Okay, so I did something wrong there. What did I do wrong? Let's check. I forgot to add value as a parameter. So I want to be able to pass 6 to it. I've got to have a parameter here. Let's try that. Yeah, we get 720. All right, so it's all working. And as I say, if you're a beginner, and this is the first time you've seen this, you really do need to practice this. Give yourself, you know, ch little challenges, add up lists of numbers or whatever. You can pass arrays to functions as well and return arrays. You just pass in the name of the array and you can, you know, just return the array. Um, that works perfectly well. But um, practice all of this. Make, make some challenges up for yourselves. Practice all three styles with parameters. You can have more than one parameter, of course. You can have a common separ separated list of parameters with various different names here. Try it all out and practice it, or you will get lost pretty quickly. So um, we're going to look at some other concepts in this course. And uh, I want to get fairly soon to um, looking at what we can do with JavaScript in terms of um, actually things like running web servers and you know just sort of generally interacting with the world beyond the console uh, on the computer, essentially. But we're probably going to have to look at some more stuff first. So the key to this is practice. Type it all out, try it all out, experiment with it a little bit, and then you're hopefully not going to get lost but you will if you just watch the videos. Okay, so until next time, happy coding.